Okay, Junior Roberts here. This is the CSEC Physics, January 2023. We're on to question one of paper two, and we're going to go right into it. <coughs> so question one says, define the period of a simple pendulum. So let's just remind ourselves of what exactly is a pendulum. So a pendulum is just um, a device or an apparatus in which we have So a pendulum is just an apparatus in which we have a um, mass, right, that is suspended from a fixed point by a, a light string, right, that is able to swing freely. So let's say something like this. So this would be representative of a pendulum. Now, in this case, no one talk about the period. So... When this pendulum, let us say we have this pendulum and we uh, displace it from some equilibrium point right here. So this would be our equilibrium point. We displace it from that equilibrium point. What we're going to see is that the pendulum will actually swing, starting from this point, swing past the equilibrium point and go to the opposite side, something like this. Right? And then it will swing back. So we're going to have this pendulum basically swinging back and forth once we would have displaced it from its initial um, resting point or initial equilibrium point. Now we can consider uh, one period to be the time it takes for this pendulum to go through one cycle. So we could consider one cycle, let us say we start at A, right? so it swings from A, go to B, and swings back. So once it goes from A to B and then back to A, that would be one cycle. So we can say that this is so the period we can say that this is is the time taken for the pendulum to complete one cycle or us say so the period is the time it takes to make one cycle or to, to make one cyclic movement. So that's the period. Next now, it says that table one shows the result of an experiment to find the relationship between the length of a string L and the period of the pendulum T. So here we have our table here. So we're given the length in meters, period in seconds, and we have a column for the period squared. So let's see what they want us to do next. So next it says we're to state the independent, which is referred to also as the manipulated variable in this experiment. So we can remember that the manipulated variable is that variable that we ourselves as the experimenter will actually change, or as the word says, manipulate. So we're changing this variable, and we expect something to happen during the experiment. So in this case, now, if we were to just um, observe here, right, observe here, so uh, let's see if there's any information that can actually help us with determining what is the manipulated variable. All right, so in this case, now, we see that we have the, we see that we have the length and the period. Now, what we will see now is that the length from theory, we can recall that the length of the pendulum is what affects the period. So the period is actually determined by the length. So as we change the length, we expect the period to change as a result. So therefore, now, for this, we can say that the manipulated variable right, or as I said, the independent variable is the length of the string. So the length of the string would be the manipulated variable. So next it says we're to complete table one by inserting the period squared, uh, t squared values in column three. So let's go back up to our table. 
So we're going to take our calculator for this and we're going to calculate the values for the p right squared. So we're going to say 0 0.77. So 0 0.77 squared is going to give us 0 0.59. So we're going to write all the values to two significant two decimal place. So 0 0.59. Next one, 0 0.99 squared. This is going to be 0 0.98. Next we have is 1.15 squared. We're going to get 1.32. Next one up, we have 1.34 squared. This is 1 point, so 1.79. So this would be one point. Eight zero. Next we have is one point four eight. We square that. We're gonna say two point one nine. Next we have one point six two squared. Two point six two. And the last one now we have one point seven five. Take the square. We're going to have 3.06. So that will be our values. All right. So we're just using the calculator to find the square of these values respectively. OK. So next thing it says now, using the grid paper provided on page 5, plot a graph of p right squared versus length. So we're asked to plot a graph of p right squared versus length. So since we're told to plot p right squared versus length, p right squared will go on the y-axis and length on the x-axis. So whatever statement is appears, appears first, always go on the y-axis. So p right squared on the y, length on the x. So scrolling down. So we have our graph paper here. I would have went ahead and actually ruled up the graph paper and included the quantity, the scale, and included the quantity, the unit, and the scale. So on the x-axis, we're using 2 centimeters to 0 0.1. While for the y-axis, we're using 2 centimeters to 0 0.4. So we can now go ahead and actually start plotting the points. So looking back at the table, we have 0 0.15 to 0 0.59. So 0 0.15 to 0 0.59. So this is 0 0.4, 0 0.6. So 0 0.59 is going to be slightly below something like that. All right, so that is 0 0.15 to 0 0.59. Next one now we have 0 0.25 to 0 0.98. 0 0.25 to 0 0.98. So this is 0 0.8. Um, 1.0. So 0 0.98 is going to be a little bit below. Something like so. Could fix that a little better. So maybe something like that. All right. Next one now. We're going to have um, 0 0.35 to 1.32. 0 0.35, 1.32, so this is 0 0.35 right here. 1.32, this is 1 1.2, 1 1.24, 1 1.28, 1.32 1 would be right on this one. So now, continuing, we have 0 0.45 to 1.8. So 0 0.45, 1.8, so 1.6 is right here. 1.8 will be right in between 1.6 and 1.0. 1 and 2.0. So now, next one now, we have 0 0.55 to 2.19. So 0 0.55, 2.19, this is 2.0, 2.04, 2.08, 2.09. Two point one two, so two point one two, two point one nine, is gonna be a little bit below. So something like that. Next one now. We're gonna have zero point six five to two point six two. So zero point six five two point six two. This is two point four two point six. Two point six two is gonna be about right in between like that. Next one now is we have 0 0.75 to 3.06. So 0 0.75, 3.06, this is 
2.8, this is 3. 3.06 is going to be about right there, because we're going to have 3.0, 3.04, so 3.06 is going to be about right there. So those are our points plotted. So now we can draw our best fit line. So taking the ruler, we're going to try to draw the line that shows the average of these points. So we want a line that passes through as many points as possible, and we have an even distribution. So looking at this right here, we have two points on this side, two on that side. Line passes through one. Let's see. Line passes through one, two, three. We have one on this side, two on this side. So let's shift this a little bit. So maybe something like that. This would be a better representation. So we could draw this in as the best fit line. All right, so we could try to get the best representation. So we could draw this in as our best fit line because what we want, we want the line to pass through as many points as possible and we want to see an even distribution. So we have two on this side, two on that side, but this one is almost on the line and it passes through these two. So that would be our best fit line. So we're going to put in our title. So we're going to say graph showing whatever is on the y, which is the period squared. So we could say t squared against length L. And we just underline like that. So that would be the graph completed. So let's move to the next question. So the next question says we're to calculate the gradient S of the graph. So we can say that our gradient S is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So now what we have to do now is going back to the graph, we have to select two, two points that are far apart and they should not be points that came from the table. So taking the ruler, we can select, let us say we select um, a point here. I'm selecting a point there and I'm selecting my next point to let us say be about right here. So those are my two points. So what I will do now is I will take my ruler and make a broken line from each point to the y and x axis respectively. So going straight across this one. So go straight across with this one. Right? And also straight across with this one. And then go straight down. So going straight down like that. Right? And then we also go straight down here. So now I will now be able to read off points for y2, y1, x2, and x1. So in this case, y2 would be 2.8 and y1 is 0 0.4. So we're going to say 2.8 seconds squared minus 0 0.4 seconds squared divided now by x2 minus x1. So x2 is 0 0.7, x1 is 0 0.1. So we have 0 0.7 meters minus 0 0.1 meter. So simplifying this now, we're going to see that this becomes 2.4 seconds squared minus 0 0.6 meters. So therefore now our slope s would be equal to, so taking the calculator, we can say 2.4 divided by 0 0.6 and we get a value of 4 on our unit will be second squared, that's in the numerator, second squared per meter. And that would be our gradient for this graph. Now, going further, it says, we're, it says given that S is equal to 4 pi squared over G, calculate the acceleration due to gravity G. So we're trying to find G. 
So we have S, the slope is equal to 4 pi squared over G. Now what we can do now is that we can actually make G the subject. So making G the subject, we're going to get that G is equal to 4 pi squared over S. So what we did was we have S is equal to 4 pi squared over G. If we choose to multiply this side by G, we also multiply this by G because anything we do on one side, we repeat it on the other side. So this one cancels with that. But we're making G the subject. So we divide this one by S and then divide this one by S. So what we get in now is that S cancels on this side. So G is equal to 4 pi squared over S, which is what we have right here. So now, what to do from here is just simply plug in the value. So we're going to have 4 times 3.14 squared and we divide it by the value we got for the slope or the gradient which was 4 seconds squared per meter so we say 4 seconds squared per meter so now what happens now is that 4 cancels with 4 so the value for the acceleration due to gravity will be 3.14 squared which g then now is equal to 9.8 6. Now what's going to happen now is that the unit will be inverted, so this number becomes meter per second squared. So this would be our final answer. So this was question 1. In future videos, we're going to be looking at question 2. So you could post your questions in comments, and I'll do my best to clear up any misconceptions. Like this if it was helpful. Thank you for watching.